under colored lights I know you're watching My body lines You can run, boy But you cannot hide Watch your inhibitions fade away As we dance into the light of day Don't think about it Just say my name I know they say Welcome to the largest lander plot right here in the Jalan Bambung Landed and Clave. I'm heading into a Sammy D that was just rebuilt a short five years back into quite like a detached concept. And we're heading to this land size of 8288 square feet. And I think this home tour is going to intrigue you, especially if you're looking for something with a huge plot of land size with a freehold status right here in D25. Let's go. We're going to do this home tour in about four different parts. Then first thing is to get the location out of the way. The location is also linked to the second and third point on what can $9 million buy you in terms of a semi D or detached plot right here into this market in Q4 of 2022. Point number three is to look at the build of the house and of course that is also linked to the location choice itself. And last but not least, we're going to look at the future potential of this particular plot of landed home if you're going to dive in and land your hands on this freehold home. All right, so quick key facts on this landed enclave. We are located in D25. We're just right across the Turf Club Avenue. This particular enclave is pretty interesting. It's predominantly called the Jalan Bambong Enclave. It's also called Woodlands Park. We're in D25, north part of Singapore. And why is it that we want to kick in this element of what can we buy when we have a $9 million budget now, especially if you're hunting for a huge land pot? It's because this kind of land size is pretty rare nowadays. We are in a three-story semi-detached enclave. So being in a pure semi-detached landed enclave will mean that no other kind of boutique projects or inter-terraces are allowed to occupy the land plots right here. And an important factor is that being in a three-storey plot means that you can go up to three and a half with 15.5 meters envelope height restriction. If you're in the two-storey landed zoning, that will mean that you could go up to 12 meters in terms of total envelope height restriction and that will determine how high you can build your landed home which will then add into your total build-out area. So this home has 8,288 square feet in terms of its land size. The build-out is about 8,300 square feet. In totality, this home is built to three levels. However, the third level is kept flexible. So it means that in future, if you want to build up a full-blown level three, you can still do so and top it up to a close to about 10,000 odd square feet. But right now, it has full-on two-story that's fully built and I want to bring you to a sneak peek of this area first because this is the part that makes this semi D looks like a detached home and we have this 15.9 meters pool and 2.5 meters width in terms of its lap pool that's located within the home if you look upwards this is the beauty of this home together with this super high retaining wall just right across me and why is this retaining wall important is because this is the added privacy that you can get when you get a semi D home like this because we have so many things to talk about I want to head in first and talk about the nine million dollars benchmark. Come, let's go. This home has seven huge bedrooms, all are en suite, two huge bedrooms that are en suite on level one, and of course the rest of the five bedrooms on level two together with a family area. You also have a separate bonus koi pond on my left hand side that is about 1.2 meters deep. The pool on my right hand side is a longish 15.9 meters, which is quite hard to achieve in most homes. Now, the key rationale is because this home is set on a land width of 18.2 meters and a land depth of close to 45 meters on one end, the other end with a little bit of tapering towards the back. You also have a bonus owner shower area right beside the pool. Meantime, it's very important to deduce what you can afford right now with a $9 million budget. And you might be wondering, hey, why are we diving specifically to a $9 million bandwidth? Now, this home, in terms of its asking price, is $8.28 million. And we're trying to decipher, if somebody has a $9 million budget, what is the kind of land size that they can buy? So we started diving in into all the available listings right now on some of the most popular portals right here in Singapore at this point in time of filming in Q4 2022. And we realized that the moment we key in these few parameters, parameters of freehold, triple nine years for landed property, 
in particularly semi-D and detached home, this is the result that we get. You'll notice that there are a lot of listings that's available for sale, but however, the moment we start to punch in this particular magic number, which is at least a 5,000 square feet land size, instantaneously, the amount of supply dropped to less than 200 available listings. And as we go upwards towards 6,000 square feet and 7,000 square feet of land size, in totality, the entire Singapore right now has less than 30 listings available. And when we deep dive into the 30 listings available right now, we realize that a couple of them are duplicated listings. Some of the listings probably got the land size and build up a little bit lopsided and swap over in the sense that you have to take note that you must be hunting for the land size. And in particular, I think right now in the entire Singapore, there are less than about 20 odd detached and semi Ds available in the entire island. If you have something that you want to cap within the $9 million range. And the rationale is because it's very hard to find a huge plot of land in Singapore firstly. Secondly, in this entire Jalan Bambo Enclave, there's about 190 landed homes right here. But this belongs to the biggest plot available. And in fact, our neighbours has the second largest plot, which is about 7,000 plus square feet. That is a key bonus criteria actually because later as we talk about the future potential, this home qualifies itself for you to split it into two semi-D homes, say in 15 or 20 years later down the road when you want to retire and you want to move out of this home and this has a nice future potential to talk about. So on top of its rarity, the second point is that the asking price for a home that is just barely six years old is asking at $999 per square foot in terms of its land PSF asking price. And what does that mean is that when we look at how all the other landed properties in Singapore, in terms of freehold and entrepreneurs are doing right now in terms of this PSF asking price these are the ranges that we are looking at in terms of OCR, RCR and CCR so let me start on with CCR first if I were to remove the price cap of 9 mil basically to hunt for a brand new detached or semi D cap one very suitable homes for tearing out and rebuilding them usually homes above 30 over years old because cat 2 homes are usually homes that's above 20 25 years old very suitable for reconstruction and a and a cat 3 homes are homes that's below 15 years old cat 4 home are brand new homes for a developer now this home belongs to the 3.5 category because it's less than six years old just rebuilt by our owners and top in 2017 so you're buying something that's ready for moving you might be asking hey should i go for a ccr concept but a lot of the brand new homes right now in CCR in District 9, 10, 11 are already challenging the $4,000 per square foot benchmark. In terms of quantum wise, they're already in the range of about 10 odd million dollars from 12, 13, 14 million dollars onwards. And we're talking about the entry level qualification size of a brand new detached home. If you're buying something brand new, what is available in the market is that developers usually buy a huge piece of land and then they will subdivide them into smaller plots. But to subdivide them, there must be these few criteria. Number one is that inter terraces must fulfill at least 150 square meters in terms of its plot size, which brings us to 1615 square feet. And you must have at least a plot width of six meters. Second category is that semi-D homes must have a plot width of at least eight meters and qualify for 2152 square feet. Third type of home, which are the detached category, you must have at least a 10 meters plot width with a total size of 4305 square feet, which is about 400 square meters. That links us to the next point, which is why should we buy a bigger land plot if you can afford it. So let me bring out these two examples. If I were to buy a semi-D or detached, which is about 5,000 square feet of land size, this is something that is say 8,200 square feet of land size. So option A and B, 5,000 and 8,200. The key difference is that if prices would appreciate by $100 per square foot in terms of land PSF. What is the significant difference is that these two differences will be $320,000 in terms of every $100 appreciation. So this is going to appreciate by $500,000, this is going to appreciate by $820,000. And let's say if you hold these properties A and B for the next 15 years, you're going to reach this significant difference with a 2% or 3% increment for 5,000 square feet land. And this is what you're going to see. This a this a 8,200 square feet land with 2 or 3% increment over the next 15 years. A 2% increment will mean that you appreciated by 30%. A 3% increment will mean that you appreciated by 45%. By the end of the day, 
This is the amount of appreciation difference that you're going to see. So from here, you can already see the key difference between buying a smaller plot of land versus a bigger plot of land should both appreciate at the same time, in the same tandem, minus all other key factors when we're just looking at inflation rate of 2-3% to per annum provided that the landed property market keeps pace with the core inflation rate in Singapore. Of course, inflation rate right now in Singapore is much higher. Barring the fact that in the entire island, there are only 73,000 landed plots and that comprises, of course, of 99 years homes as well. If I were to remove the 99 years property, that would be lesser amount of triple nines and free old properties. Coming into the location of D25, you might be wondering, hey, should I spend about $9 million or $8.28 million in the D25 location? And that will bring us to the future potential of this place. Because if you are thinking of going into 9, 10, 11, technically speaking, $9 million is out of reach in these three districts. If you are buying something that is a small plot, like a 2152 square feet, brand new lander, semi D, that would be about seven odd million dollars. If you're going for at least a detached that is brand new, it's already closing into about 10 to 11 or maybe even $12 million for some of the more recent reasonable kind of land size but to buy this land with 8 to 8 square feet this is as if like you're buying two land at one go now your key future audience will come in the next 10 15 or 20 years because what's going to happen in this particular north part of Singapore is that we are right in between from the Kranji Turf Club Avenue very closely to Woodlands which is already earmarked as a mega hub secondly the direct link towards Johor Bahru with the rapid transit line that's going to be completed by 2026 the next one will be the future downtown line interchange at Sungai Gado area importantly is that when you buy a landed home you want to sit and wait for the appreciation to happen let's just do a quick projection of the next 15 years is that Assuming, let's say you buy this property in 15 years' time, that will already be in the year 2037. This home will be up 20, 21 years old in terms of its building age. And I'm going to bring up the criteria for subdivision. To qualify for subdivision, you must hit two criteria. Number one is that your width has to be big because after subdividing, this home qualifies further into two semi D plots. The two new semi D plots must have at least a width of 8 meters each. Here we have 18.2 meters. After I subdivide, I can easily achieve 9 meters for each semi D home. Now secondly, the two semi D homes must have at least 200 square meters per house. I'm already about 760 odd square meters right now at 828 square feet. When I subdivide it, I can easily achieve about 380 square meters per semi D homes, which is still pretty long and pretty big. Thirdly is that my neighbor must hit in this category that after I subdivide from them, they must have at least a 400 square meters total land plot. If my neighbor does not have at least a 400 square meters, I cannot detach from them into two semi-Ds. Thankfully, of course, our neighbor is about 7,000 plus square feet, which qualifies them to stand alone after we subdivide. And this is a key bonus because by the year 2037, you want to sell this home, you have additional options. You can sell this home as it is, which I think will still be beautiful. Secondly is that you can sell this home to potential developers or next homeowner that wants to buy this huge plot. So you have that additional future exit potential, which is a rarity to come. I need to show you the home first because I think you are dying to have a look at this home. And we're going to start from the courtyard. When our owners first designed it together with an architect, they want to make it into a modern home that is timeless. That means that anybody that takes over this home as a new owner, you can redesign it into any kind of design that you want to have. So firstly, the first part of the home has that 6 meters allocation to this particular feature right here together with the pool, bigger than usual because most of the time pool dimension is at 2 meters but this is 2.5 meters. Pool length is 15.9 meters and most of the time homes will just build about 10 to maybe 12 and of course pool depth is standard at 1.2 tapering towards more shallow area to a deeper area and you can really lap right here within this pool. Now it's opening up to the sky and the key rationale is because that allows a lot of cross vent from the top of the home into the bedrooms that's facing towards this area because this super high retaining wall firstly having detached itself away with only the back part linking with the other two bedrooms this is a huge design bonus because you overlook towards your own pool it's like an internal pool view from the bedrooms right here and it's also a privacy screen because you are facing towards your own retaining wall. Of course, this wall, I leave it to your own imagination how you want to do it. And you also have a linking bridge right in the middle. This is like an outdoor bathroom. You can act as a gas powder room. So you have gas coming in, your guests can actually utilize this gas bathroom. It has shower features, very good after a swim. 
you don't have to walk into the house with wet feet. You can just come here and dry yourself and bathe. As we move here, I'm still at the courtyard area. Right outside, basically what we like about the outside area in this is a car porch having that 7.5 meter setback, which is standard for all landed properties, is that you can park three cars. Sliding panel gate, gate is about 1.8 meters in our height. In terms of the height of the car porch, it's also very nicely done because if you are to take out the plans, the first level is about 4 odd meters, second level 3 odd meters, third level 3 odd meters. The roads outside points to a car DZ on the left, which means that in terms of car traffic volume, it's going to be much lower because there's only a few neighbors on our left hand side towards the car DZ. Right outside is also a dotted line with no double yellow line at the side roads, which means that you can also park additional cars as well. But you can already park three cars, I mean, which is great for your family, great for your kids the moment they get their license. As I move here, this is also a beauty because this is also six meters. What our owners have designed is that this is like a beautiful gardening area with the turf area, with the koi pond. So you have this side gate right here that creates like a nice courtyard boundary. It's really like you're entering into a garden space, beautifully done with this plantation design on this wall. So that creates an additional privacy screen from the other neighbour as well. It's very high in nature. If you look at the side walls, beautifully done. The theme is consistent with black and white fashion. Adds back to the fact that it's timeless and uh, maybe Joseph can walk there or walk here. I just want to show how high the wall line is because uh, you can't see me. Side green wall is important so that your neighbours don't look into your level one, what you're doing right there. And that's beautifully done. There's also this like very zen area in terms of its key gardening feature. Really like all these nice dark pebble stones here. And that will link us towards the backyard. One nice feature is that they created this outdoor storage which allows you to put things here. Of course, that's where the DB box has been located. Additional gardening zone right at the back. Now, why is it important to talk about the build of the house is because in terms of the time and effort, let me share with you what are the three components. Firstly, the land price, because land price just rise, supply is limited, demand is increasing because a lot of people, once they get into the landed property market, they don't want to exit. HDB upgrades, condo property owners are also aiming for this market. So, landed properties only form about 5% of Singapore. Number two is the structure that's sitting on top of the land. Right now, if you are to reverse engineer the asking price of this, if you want to buy something like this, 8,000 over square feet of land. Let's just assume that you buy this for price X. In order to determine what is price X, we need to look at what is the construction price. So let me take out the whole 8.28 million and then reverse it backwards to the land price. Construction cost right now, any builder or architect that you approach, minimum they're going to quote you is $450 per square foot. 8,300 square feet of build up area will then cost you about 3 million and not counting your rental costs for the next 18 to 24 months. And of course, this home took our clients close to about two and a half years to construct. So if you want to minus off that 3 million, that would then be $5 million for the land cost. And if you were to calculate that, that is about $600 over dollars per square foot, which is almost unheard of in today's market. You might be thinking, hey, why don't I buy something that is about 5 odd million, 6 odd million and rebuild myself? Well, firstly, this kind of land size is not easily attainable. Secondly, is that if you do have 5 odd million dollars to buy a land plot, it might be something that is 4,000 to 5,000 square feet. That brings us to the third point, which is the intangible factor. You're buying somebody's time and effort Effort. The construction period is a huge mental energy period that the owners or developers or the builder have to invest into the home during the rebuild stage. If you're somebody that loves to buy time, a transaction run is about three to six months and you can immediately enjoy the benefit of this home. If you don't come to this central core area, I just love the fact that almost every part of this home is quite Instagrammable. This is the area for a future lead provision. It's already inside the BCA plans. What you need to do is that resubmit the plan to BCA. It's already having that provision on the original plans itself. You can put in a lift that goes straight to level 2, level 3 with the A&A &A opening towards the railing and the leaf landing towards level 2. This is a great future-proof concept for the home. Right behind that stairway core is this nice entertainment area. Huge dining space. When you stand here, you look out on the left, don't you feel that you're in Japanese garden? Just have a look at this. Oh my goodness, it's just so beautiful, so tranquil. Partially, it's because this locale is in the forested area, nature reserve. You're very near to the Singapore Zoo. It's also very near to the Woodland Sports School. So if you have kids that are aiming for a sports school, that's a great place to be at. Dry kitchen, fantastic. Caesar stone slab right in the middle here with storage at the bottom. Right behind the dry kitchen is actually your storeroom area, which is your home shelter. 
And then you have a huge, gigantic, wet kitchen right here. Right in the middle of the wet kitchen is still like a central dining table area for a six-seater comfortably. Two sides having its kitchen cabinets. Of course, you have a burner system right there, huge sink. You also have like a super wet kitchen in your yard area. Over here, you have two bedrooms that are en suite and beautiful bedrooms. And you might be wondering, hey, why are the two bedrooms entryway from the kitchen? Now, this is very easy. Basically, what you need to do is if you want to modify the concept a little bit, you just need to put in a dividing wall or maybe just create a nice glass panel or sliding panel. You can keep this as a nice open landing that serves the two bedrooms. And I'm going to show you this bedroom first. This is like the smaller, smallest room. They're all ensuite, but this room is pretty special. Now it's like a tea room. It overlooks towards your main lab pool. This is like an open yard area for ventilation. Very modern kind of Balini hotel style. That creates an outdoor concept. In the ensuite bathroom, it's like having this outdoor area right here. And it also acts as a ventilation shaft. Very good concept. A sliding panel door. Bathrooms are all immaculate condition. This second room, slightly bigger room, opens up towards the back, en suite as well. You also have this area that assess the central zoning, a little bit like a washing bay right outside. That's where the backyard area is being located. Bear in mind that actually the two meter setback has already been fulfilled right at the pebbles area. So what this means is that if I want to construct something outside, you are allowed to do so because the two meters setback is already achieved and you can build an additional helper's room if you want. So I'll leave that up to you. So there's a lot of potential of this home. What is outside of this area is basically your washing bay. A lot of the water points are really provisioned for gardening. You're gonna love it when you come here because if you are a garden lover, this is the place to buy. It's time for me to bring it up to level two and then we'll check more upstairs. Let's go. Very importantly is that uh, if you want to rebuild your home from scratch, that's a great opportunity for you to have that provision because sometimes when you go for homes that are above 10 or 15 years old, when the first hand owner didn't provide that provision, then it's a little bit hard for you to craft out the particular area. So this home is future-proof in the sense that in future, you want to put in a lift, this is the particular exact locale that can do that. And that can open up to this landing that I'm coming towards you, which is here. So the exact position of the lift will be from this entryway. It will come up here all the way to level 3 and then you can just come up from this landing. Now what is the beauty is that right across me, this opens up directly to the sky. And this is such an important key feature because the owners and the architects, they first constructed this. This is almost like your internal pool view that you have. Opening up to the sky, having that ventilation from the top and airflow coming in and flowing naturally. This almost cools the home in almost like a 360 degrees fashion because if I were to go to the front and the back of the home, you're almost facing like full-blown greenery. After that row of landed homes will be the forested area. Right behind you is almost close to the forested area as well. The added feature of this retaining wall is also to block off the afternoon sun. Now the other thing is that you can also see through downstairs and upwards towards the sky from the front part and the family area together with this portion looking down on the left and right hand side. So it's a very nice area for you to hang out. I'm going to bring you to the biggest room first. This room is fantastic for it to be a master room. In fact, every room can be a master room because every room is huge. Every room has its own ensuite. Wardrobes are all fully done, dark greyish kind of finishing and having this nice modern black metal plating kind of a handle which is very nice feel to touch. This is like a little family zone area, your own living room within your master. This can be of course the place for your bed head. The beauty is that here, if you want to pull on a trellis, leave it to you, you want to keep it open like this, leave it to you. And that's where we're talking about the forested area at the back. So that has a lot of nice fresh air. And the balcony is huge. Right below us will be where the car porch is. And I love this concept here because this ensuite firstly is big. Secondly is that this is the part that we're talking about. It allows you to open up, overlooks towards your own pool as well. So it's a nice feature and if you appreciate the home from this area here, you're almost like in the Balinese resort kind of feel. So this is really the kind of design and the key element that this home has achieved. So if I want to move back, 
bathrooms you don't have to do anything and in fact if you were to come for the viewing you realize that the bathrooms are kept in such immaculate condition there's no need to worry about the vanity top wall tiles and flooring is all kept in such great shape you can just move in literally all you need to do for this home in my own Opinion is that do a fresh coat of paint on the exterior and the interior to your own taste and colour. That is basically what you need to do. So if you were to come into this room, looking towards the left side where you get to see your neighbour and of course that's the normal for all detached rooms and semi-detached rooms but this room is extremely long and huge. You have five panels on my flip side, king bed, side tables, you have a chest of drawer right here. You have a place for your armchair, massage chair, reading chair, study zone area. You still have a huge space for TV console. It's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles uh, in terms of width. Pretty wide. <music> Bathrooms are all very huge. Ventilation windows. Very nice, consistent theme and concept. Easy for maintenance where you have that kind of dark finishing in terms of wall tiles and flooring. I like the fact that a lot of fine details like this hidden between the two wall lines for a sliding panel instead of the openable kind of doors which takes out a little bit more space. Also, small little details like this. Wooden panel with metal framing because you have wet hands so if uh, it's all maintained with wood, it might warp over time. This is of course a nice fine detail to have. Icons wise are all Mitsubishi electric inverter system. Nice little feature is that here, the window can be just right here but in order to have larger kind of feel there's a bay window kind of concept right here so it acts like a sitting area throw in some cushions of course you can put on some displays so in total i've shown you four bedrooms two on level one and then two on level two already we still have three rooms to go now this room also huge six panel wardrobe space the queen bed looks very small in this huge room Every room is like a nice huge one beta condominium. First it's wide, high ceiling. You have this like outdoor balcony area that links to the other room. Fantastic room for your kids. And then, oh my goodness, look at this. You can even put in like a table and chair in the bathroom. Look at this. So your study table is here. You can study in the bathroom. <laughs> Okay, actually everything is like plus size lah. I would say that's the word. Oh my goodness, it's sitting fan right here. Rain shower. Thing is like big and everything looks so new as well. Storage space. So this is the fifth bedroom. I'm gonna put it into the sixth one and the seventh one. But before that, you have a nice family zoning here, which is fantastic. Our owners have created like a little pantry area here. You can put in your water dispenser, air condition, family area. If you really need the eighth bedroom, just need to construct a nice party wall right here together with a sliding panel door or a full on door. This will be your eighth bedroom. Right now it's like an open gym family zoning right here. These are storage space as well for you to put in more stuff together with a DB box area. Sixth big room. Also very huge bath. So this is the room that's interlinked towards that fifth room, which is why I say this room is good for both your children. In fact, your entire family can be on level two. And then level one, that two rooms nearer to the kitchen can be a guest bedroom. You also have like a back balcony overlooking towards the back. So every room is like super gigantic. So the seventh bedroom, Actually, every room is huge. La. I should stop using the word huge, 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 huge. <laughs> every room is so big here. Maybe you might be wondering, hey, what can I still do with this room? Because when our owners constructed this place, they were really thinking about the usability. Although they can stretch to 10, 11,000 square feet of build-out area, but they just felt that there's no need to do so. So they kept it at about 8,003 in terms of the build-out area. So what you can do is that you can go up to level 3, and I'm going to bring it up now. Right now you have like a dual entry on the left and right which is interesting. Oh, it's drizzling a little bit. Okay. Very nice in the evening as well. You can look at the front view and the back view. It's, it's almost like a 360 kind of view. 
huge area in the roof that is unused. My first idea is that if I were to own this home, I'll flush it with artificial carpet grass that is very least in maintenance. Flush all the way towards the front and the back. It's going to look beautiful. Secondly is that I'm going to buy some legit barbecue pit and put it at the corner. You're going to have your party here. Number three, because I have kids, right? So I'm going to put up like higher kind of wooden fence on the front and back for safety. Number four is that I'm going to install some trellis at the top as well, but I will leave it open. That's going to give me some shade in the day. I can extend all the way towards the back boundary or the front boundary. Up to you. Nice trellis at the top just to have some shade, just to block some rain during rainy days like this. Number five is that in future, if you want to max up in terms of the build-up area, so this home is not fully maxed up yet because you can go up to three full on level. So you can get in your architect and builder, resubmit the plans and build additional bedrooms here. So this is the space for additional build-up area you can create and now two huge rooms or you can create additional level here because technically speaking, you already have 8,319 square feet of build-up space. You don't really need this unless you need more than seven or eight bedrooms. Then you can explore this in future. Meantime, I'm going to head in here Alright, so we're done with the home tour. Thank you for staying tuned with us throughout and I hope you love this home. You need to come here for a physical viewing and give a call to our listing managers. The numbers are all right here. To sum it up for you is that this home has future potential in our concept because just have a look at in terms of the asking PSF is at $999 per square foot and if I were to remove the entire construction portion the land is basically at about 600 odd dollars per square foot but most importantly is that at this particular quantum to get a home in this beautiful build-up, in this beautiful construct that's just less than six years old. At this price quantum of 8.28 million, it's hard to find in today's market. And most importantly, free hole for the hole for the next 15, 20 years before you move on to your next season in life. And uh, I think you should definitely give us a call. So once again, my name is Melvin Lim, Prop Tim Russ. As always, happy to show you the place. And meantime, take care. Just me sacrificing myself to come up with the rain. Mm. <laughs> I got, I got. River that's something okay, oh. <laughs> so quick. Uh, I think we'll go up.